In today's video, we're gonna go over a couple of tips that will make your life easier in Adobe Illustrator. The first one is whenever you want to change the color scheme of an illustration quickly and do that by using an image as a reference. Go to Unsplash and I went in the nature section of the site and browse through. Once you find an image, click on it and right click and make sure to copy it. Then you can paste it inside Illustrator, move it on the side and then go to object and select the option to create object mosaic. Make sure that you have a 4x4 in the number of tiles and hit OK. This will create an effect that's similar to a pixelated image that will give you a number of options when it comes to the colors. I'll then take the rectangle tool and create a few shapes that I will use to sample the colors that are interesting to me using the eyedropper tool. I suggest having the lightest color at the top and the darkest one at the bottom. That way you're going to have a good range for your palette. If you're not happy with something, you can just click on it and replace it with a different shade of color. Now it's time to apply those colors to the illustration, so select the elements that you want and hold down shift if you want to select multiple ones at the same time. Then using the eyedropper tool, take your pick on what will be your chosen color for that particular part. Doing this manually can take some time, but it does give you a lot of control over what's being used. That way you can end up with a result that you're happy with. Now maybe it's hard to see, but the last piece that's missing is the shadows. So I'm just going to turn it into a darker shade of brown. If you want to do this automatically, then go to the swatches panel and with all of the new shapes selected, hit new color group icon, then name it however you want. Make sure to have the entire illustration grouped, so select it, group it. And once you go to edit, find edit color options and click on recolor. From the panel, look for the advanced option. And then on the right hand side, you should see your new color scheme. Clicking on it will apply it to the entire thing. And now it's up to you to make any changes that you see fit. For example, the black color doesn't have a shade assigned, so you can tap on it and you will be generated. And if you notice that the color doesn't fit, for example, the shadow part again, you can click on it and make adjustments in the color panel below. This is a quick way to try out new color schemes and create multiple options to choose from before sending it to a client. This next tip is for whenever you're struggling with the pen tool and find it hard to create curved paths that look good. Well, there's an easier way to do it and with the pen tool actually just draw only straight points and while holding down the Alt key or the Option key, Click and drag on the pad that you want to curve and it's going to do the hard part for you. Unless you are really good with the pen tool already, this technique will help you match your sketch or reference in just a few steps. Let's take this here for example, I place points at the highest, lowest and on the sides. And by holding down the option key, I can create a pretty cool shape right away. If you don't manage to have a clean transition between curves, you can actually take the direct selection tool, click on the anchor and drag on the circle element to make a smooth transition. If you want to practice on this sketch, you can find the link in the description to download it for free, along with all of the vector files used in this tutorial. Also, I'll be launching in a few weeks a new course on creating illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. So if you want to get a discount when it launches, join the waitlist, the link is in the description as well. For the last tip, we're going to try to do a unique halftone effect and we're going to start by writing in the name Nike. Then using the curvature tool, we're going to create a random shape. It's up to you what kind of shape you want to create. And after making some adjustments to the size of the shape, let's move it up and select both of them, hit option command C. That's going to wrap the text inside the shape. Then with it selected, we can go to object expand, hit OK. And we're ready to apply our first effect, which is going to be found under blur. Then click on radial blur. I'm using 10 for the amount and the quality is set for the best. We can then go to object, hit rasterize to create an image, hit OK with the default options on. And the next step is to go to effect, pixelate and hit color halftone. The values that I'm using are 10 for the radius and 20 for each channel. Hit OK and you're going to have the effect but we still need to make it into a vector. Click on the image trace at the top and then open up the trace panel. Inside it, make sure to ignore the white selected and then start playing around with the threshold, paths and corner values. I usually like to have a lower noise number just because it's going to give me more details and get it closer to what I want it to look like. Once you're happy with how it looks, you can hit expand and that's going to give you a vector file that you can actually change the color for. I hope that you've enjoyed these three tips. Let me know in the comment section which one you enjoyed the most. I'd appreciate it if you can like this video and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.